Question four then from the 2019 National 5 exam paper one. Three marks here for, there you go, slice of a circle. Slices of circles, fractions of circles. All the parts are the same fraction. Whatever fraction of the angle you've got, that's the fraction of the area, that's the fraction of the circumference. It just depends which one they're asking for. You can see that you've got the angle, so you know what fraction you've got. You've got 240 out of the 360, because it's wanting it said, calculate the length of the major arc. That's the big one that you see. The little minor arc here has actually been removed, in case it confuses you. Right, calculate the length of the major arc, and it says you have to use 3.14 for pi. Well, the length of that arc, just call it arc AB, it's a certain fraction of the circle. The angle gives the fraction. It takes up 240 out of the 360 degrees. It's that fraction of the circle, so that arc is that fraction of the circumference. Circumference is, you probably use pi d. So pi times the diameter, if the radius is 30, the diameter is 60. So pi times 60. Now there's lots of calculations here, but it's a known calculator paper after all. And you have to use 3.14. But before you start using 3.14, you can also simplify this a bit. You could start cancelling these parts down. So there's 6 into that, 36 will go 6. That 6 will go into the 24, 4 times. So in the end, you just end up with 40 times pi. Now 40, when you multiply by 40, the 10 will move the point forward a place, turning it into 31.4. And then you've just got to do 4 times it, which you can just do in the spot. 4 fours are 16. This pen's going. Carry the 1. 4 1s are 4 and the 1 makes 5. But I passed over the point doing that. And then 4 3s are 12. So you get 125.6 centimetres. So number 5 then. Well, what we've got here. It's the statistics part now, isn't it? Here's our list of numbers. The first thing you should do is just count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. N equals 9. What does it say? The midday temperatures were recorded over, and then it tells you. Read the question first. A nine-day period, and the temperatures are written down like this. You have to get the median and the semi-interquartile range for three marks. Now, sometimes you can do a calculation with the nine to find the positions of the median and the quartiles, but when there's only a few of them, you can do that visually, but not until you've put them in order. You don't get a middle unless they're in order, or else anything could go there. So I've got two threes. I've got two fours. I've got a five. I've got a six. I've got a seven. I've got a nine. I've got a ten. I'll just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you can split it. You can see that going in four gives you that in the middle. But there's nothing here splitting that half, and there's nothing here splitting that half. But those are your quartiles. That's Q1, that's Q2, and that's Q3, where Q2 is the median. So what did it say? What's the median? Median, or can you just write Q2, is five, but that was actually degree centigrade. Not sure if they're going to penalise you or not for not putting units in. Don't worry, you probably five would do. Now, for the semi interquartile range, I'll need to identify the quartiles. I'm just going to put the numbers down. Now, it's not there. So you take what would be in between them. Halfway between a three and a four would be a 3.5. Halfway between a seven and a nine, that's easy. That's an eight. So for the semi interquartile range, and I'll put my units in the final answer, it does what it says. Semi, halfway, inter, in between the quartiles, range, difference between the highest and lowest. So what's half of the difference between the highest and lowest quartiles? Well, the highest was 8, the lowest was only 2 to choose from, was 3.5, and you have to half it. So that means you've got, that's 4.5 to be divided by 2, so that's 2.25 degrees Celsius. Part B. Over the same time period, 
The midday temperature is somewhere else, of course that was Grantford and this is in Endock or Endoch. The median temperature was 8, that one was 5, and the same as the quarter range was 1.5 in this other place. So in this other place we've got Q2 was equal to 8 and the semi-interquartile range was equal to 1.5. Now it just says make two comments to compare them. This just takes a big screed of writing, doesn't it? Because all they really want you to do is demonstrate you know what those numbers stand for. The median is a measure of average. The semi-interquartile range is a measure of spread. So you're going to say which one is higher or lower? Well, I have to choose one. I'll pick this one, whose name I've already forgotten. That was Endoc. So I'll say the temperature was higher on average in Endoc or Kuch or whatever as its median. 8, which is degrees Celsius, is greater than 5. Now what about the spread of temperatures? Well, if I'm taking this one, because if you do it the other way around, you'll be saying less than. If we're going for endoch again, what can you say about the temperatures? If the same air to quarter range is 1.5 instead of that, it's a smaller spread. So you can see it's got a smaller spread, or you can see it's more consistent, whichever you like. The temperatures we're more consistent. How about that? We're more consistent. Or you can say less spread out. Unless you're doing the other one, then you say the opposite way around. In Endoc, as its semi interquartile range, 1.5 is less than the other one's 2.25. Or something of that nature. So number six then, that's from paper one of the National Five. You've got this scatter diagram. I've not bothered copying it completely. You've got these scatters of points here. And it says this diagram represents the fuel consumption against the engine size. Fuel consumption, engine size. A line of best fit has been drawn, so that's all I've drawn. You have to find for three marks what's the equation of that line. The equation of the line of best fit to give F in terms of E. Well, you search the diagram and you see there's two exact points on it. Those are the ones you're going to use. There's a point at the top here. I know I've not put the scales in. That's at one and a half along the bottom. So that's at 1.5 and it's at 14 up the way. This one, the other exact point, is at 3.5 and that one goes up to 8. So that's what I'm using. This is in litres, and this is the fuel consumption, as in kilometres per litre. Well, find the equation of that line. You'll need its gradient. So what's the gradient of that line? That'll be the difference in the x y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates. y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1, except they're not y's and x's, so maybe we'll just put we inverted commas around that. So the difference, 8 take away 14. That's okay, because it's meant to be negative because it's going down. 3.5 take away 1.5, so that is negative. 8 take away 14 is the negative of 14 take away 8, which is 6. And 3.5 take away 1.5 is 2. So that gradient is negative 3. The slope of that line is negative 3. For every one along, it goes down 3. Now you can get its equation. You could use y minus b, even though there's no such thing, y minus b equals m x minus a. I'll put that in brackets there, in inverted commas, because I'll have to reinterpret them, because it's not y, it's f. So when I write it down, I'm going to put F minus, I need to pick a point, I'll pick this one. F minus 8 is negative 3 times, and E is in the place of X, minus 3.5. So F is going to be negative 3E, that bit's okay, here's a wee bit of a nuisance here, I'm to multiply this. 
3 times 3.5. Well, the three fives are 15 and 1 over. That's 10.5. Negative, negative, negative times negative, positive. But that's going to come across and join it as a plus 8. So here's my final equation. F is negative 3e plus 8. 18.5 Then in part B, just for one mark Amar's car has an engine size of 1.1 You're not meant to read it off the graph Use your equation it says So whatever you put in, don't try and read the answer from the graph It has to be consistent with what you've put down here Even if what you've put down is wrong Use your equation from part A to estimate how many kilometres per liter. In other words, the fuel consumption you should get. So you just pop it into that. F equals negative 3 times, and I've already forgotten, 1.1. The engine size was 1.1. So it'll be that plus 18.5. More decimals to work out. That's negative 3.3 plus 18.5. You can set it out one under the other as a wee subtraction, or you can do it in the spot. This has been subtracted 5, take away the 3 is 2, and 18, take away the 3, is 15. And that should be kilometres per litre.